I'm making a threaded fixture to hold the parts from a piece of 1 and 5 8 12 L 14. Facing the ends using the MPG. Touching off on the outside diameter so we can get an accurate G54X setting. Building a center for tailstock support. Sorry about the shakes, I'm still trying to figure out my camera stand. That was a table hitting the tailstock, which is too short for the live center to reach the part and have the tool reach the part. So I need to move the live center over onto the 4 inch extension, which makes it all bendy. The joys of a 3-in-1 machine. I'm using a silver insert meant for aluminum. Uh, carbide is supposed to be used aggressively and that's hard to happen on a hobby machine and I heard somewhere in a forum that if you use the aluminum ones on steel it works better than using the gold ones which are meant for steel because it gives the carbide the aggression that it likes. We'll see how that works out. Uh, this is a G-code routine uh, which is looping through the turning passes. We're bringing this down to 19 millimeters or 3 quarters of an inch-ish uh, to go in a ER32 or ER40 call it, 3 quarter inch call it, and I'm adjusting the speeds and feeds uh, during this cycle. So we just sped this up because it took a long time. You can see here that the surface finish is pretty crappy, but that's because it's a very pointy tool and we were taking fairly aggressive cuts, so I don't expect the surface finish to be great. I'm just doing a diameter check here, see if we're close. The diameter here is not critical, I just want it to be the biggest thing I can get in an ER32 collet and fit a 3 quarter inch collet on my ER40. So we take some passes on uh, fine feed until we are done. Putting in a shoulder using the MPG manually. Uh, this is so that this part doesn't rest on the I call it nut, but actually just hits against the face of the collet itself. If you're enjoying this video, please click on the like button below. If you're not enjoying it, please tell me why 
and and hang around it gets better there's some boring stuff i mean boring stuff with boring you know they're boring holes Now we have it flipped around and mounted in the ER40 collet chuck. I only have 8 inch increments on my ER40 because I'm cheap and it's just for holding standard diameter stocks so I don't have the full range. So I couldn't use a 20mm which is the biggest ER32 so I'm going with 19 which is equivalent of 3 quarter. Uh, yeah, I have metric ER32s and imperial ER40s because America. Taking the opportunity to make sure my G54 offset is still good. And we start drilling out the bore. This is a similar handwritten boring routine, it's very boring. Uh, we're going to have some boring jokes because this is actually a boring video. Uh, this goes through and makes the hole bigger until we get to the minor diameter of our internal thread. So I thought I would improve the chamfers on my internal thread g-code routine and I was looking at this running and thinking that doesn't look right, that really doesn't look right. And then it goes in, well it's still going, we'll see what happens when it goes and does the internal uh, chamfer. Uh, it's taking away the internal, hopefully the internal minor diameter of the internal thread there. Oh, that's not good. Not good. So I almost scrapped the part, but not quite. I was able to recover it, refaced it, re-zeroed everything, uh, went back to the old chamfering routine which actually works just fine. Uh, and then it goes in. It does an outside chamfer by going from the it does it to the full depth of the thread at right angles as a turning and that just means that the end of the thread will rather than being a sharp edge it will taper down to zero at the end in theory I think when we do our threading uh, this is a G76 G code uh, threading It's a wee bit tight, which I expected because I hadn't put in any tolerances for clearance. So I added an extra two thou to the routine and ran it through again. And now it fits perfectly. Over to the bandsaw. This is the setup in the bandsaw to get the distance. I got about 25 thou clearance there. Uh, or 50 thou, I should say. Uh, and then we just cut them off. Uh, I'm using the bandsaw rather than parting in the lathe because when I made these billets I really didn't leave enough allowance to cut them off with any margin of error. Uh, so using the bandsaw it's a narrower cut and it gives me a little bit more leeway on the on the parts when they're when they're cut off. So I was assuming that the saw would tighten these in the jig when when it runs because it's running clockwise on the top but of course when it gets to the bottom it's going the other way so it loosened off at the end. So I will need to have these uh, tightened up properly not just finger tight uh, going forwards. 
Uh, but it does kind of cut it off. Oh, there we go. Interesting. And and here's our half-finished uh, slugs. Why do I feel like Captain Queeg?